Good afternoon from South African time and good morning, Petrus. I really appreciate you making your time available. It's great seeing you for a change in person again. Um, tell us where you are right now. Where are you sitting? Oh, well, good morning from my side, Dr. Hubert. I, um, I am sitting in Atlanta, Georgia in the USA. Um, and I'm sitting in my living room because we are all working from home nowadays. Um, and so, yeah, I'm broadcasting live from my living room in Atlanta. Cool stuff. You were a final year student in 2018. Yes, yes. I did my uh, final year project with you as well in 2018. Yeah. And then you went abroad. What triggered you to go and study abroad? So I had to think about this for a second because I think I've always wanted to, I've always had this drive to go and study somewhere else a little bit outside of Pretoria, at least, um, because I grew up in Pretoria. I, um, I was born there. I went to primary school there. I went to high school there and then I went to university there. And so I always had a bit of a drive to just explore a little bit, just live in some other place for for a short while. Um, and then in my third year, um, I was sitting in actually in one of your co former colleagues um, classroom in uh, Nadia Fulyun, as she was called back then. I think she's now Nadia Trent, right? Um, I was sitting in her class and um, she started speaking about sort of she introduced herself and introduced uh, sort of gave a bit of a background of her education. Um, and then she told us that she studied at Georgia Tech. And I thought, you know what? I want to I want to go somewhere else. What what if I go and talk to her about studying abroad? And so I uh, scheduled a short call with her um, or meeting um, and we just had a conversation about studying somewhere. And I told her I wanted to either study at Stellenbosch or somewhere abroad. And she said, well, well why not? Why not just go and study? Why not just apply at Georgia Tech and see what happens? Um, and so Georgia Tech was the only school that I applied to. Um, to do graduate studies and um, yeah I got in so I, I think Nadia really played a big role in in me getting this this bug to 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 go and study overseas that's great well uh, I mean not only did she did she study at Georgia Tech uh, in terms of her master's degree um, and I'll insert a little clip in in our interview here when I when I edited she was actually the face of the master's program in supply chain management. And I think she still yes. is the face of, of that degree program at Georgia Tech. Hi, my name is Nadia. I'm a graduate student at Georgia Tech's H. Milton Stewart School of Industrial and Systems Engineering. Our school has been ranked as the number one graduate program by the US News and World Report for over 20 consecutive years. One of the ways in which we have maintained our high rankings is through our innovative educational programs. In keeping with this tradition, we have now created another unique program for individuals who would like to fast track a career focused on global supply chain engineering. The new Master of Science in Supply Chain Engineering is a one-year professional graduate degree specifically designed to equip young professionals with the problem-solving skills necessary to tackle the complexities of global supply chains. Yeah, we, um, I, I went the other day I was on the website and I saw this little video that she made with uh, the department um, to actually sort of um, explain what the course is all about. So that was kind of fascinating. And yeah, so she introduced me to the course that I studied as well. Uh, which was really, really exciting. All right, so many people wish to study abroad, yet you actually went and did it. So explain a little bit in terms of what went through that, um, that process. I mean, it does say something about your commitment. You, I mean, your entire academic career here at the university as well, you've taken your, your studies pretty seriously. You are a, one of the top performers um, but what went into the process of getting to Georgia where you are right now? Yeah, so the first thing, the first thing that I basically did is I had to do a bunch of research 
on what I was going to study actually and if I wanted to actually do the degree. So Nadia sort of piqued my interest. Um, but then I had to sort of go and look around and sort of see uh, what was available in the world and, and, and whether or not this, this degree is what I actually want to do. So I did a ton of research um, trying to figure out what the course is about, what Georgia Tech is all about. Um, and then I started doing research on what the what the requirements are to actually get into the school. Um, and so uh, they have a lot of resources available online to figure these things out. Um, but so, yeah, my first step was to figure out what are the requirements to actually study at Georgia Tech. Um, and they were basically that I... I just needed to go through the online application process, um, which required a couple of reference letters. Um, and so I reached out to people in my network, and I think you uh, actually wrote one of my uh, reference letters for me. Um, and then once I did all the research on what the university's requirements were, I did a lot of research on what uh, the USA's uh, visa requirements are, um, because the visa really does. Uh, yeah, without a visa, you are not going to study abroad. Um, and so once I figured all of these things out, I started putting things in place. So first of all, to come to the States, you need to, especially to do graduate studies, you have to complete uh, two examinations. Um, one is called the graduate record exam, and the other one is an English language test. So I first of all try to do that, get that out of the way so that I could... Um, uh, they, they, they need standardized testing scores to sort of evaluate people against each other. Um, and then once I, once I went through the application process, I then had to figure out um, how am I going to actually get a visa. And so to get a visa, the, one of the biggest hurdles cross over is having the funds to do so, um, is having the funds to actually come and study here. And um, I would, yeah, I would say that that, that probably the biggest hurdle for me because studying in the states is very expensive um and so i had to scramble a little bit to to find to find funding um because my parents my parents just couldn't afford to send me here so i um fortunately through the company that i was working for at the time um after after i graduated some of these guys did some consulting work for this for this loan company uh, that is based in the uk um and they're called prodigy finance um, and so through them, I then figured out I could actually apply for a loan uh, to get the money to come and study in the States. Um, and then once they backed me, I was able to get my visa approved. Um, and so it, it was a long and difficult road, but I, yeah, I would just encourage people if they want to do it, just to be patient and push through it. It, it takes a while. Right. So... We'll we'll get to the actual studying just now. So, are you or, or did you actually get some student work while you were in the states, or did this loan cover your your studying fee, your study fees, as well as your accommodation and your living expenses? Yes. So, so two things happened. Is the first thing is the loan basically committed to cover all of my expenses, including my. Um, including my, uh, what do you call it, my living expenses and the tuition expenses. So that was the money that sort of got me uh, the visa. But then also knowing, uh, having Nadia as a good contact because she is a really good friends with some of the people in the department, um, Nadia helped me to find uh, student work in the, uh, in the department. And so the thing is with, uh, with your student visa, you are not allowed to work off campus. So you can't get a job at... Uh, the McDonald's or wherever you have to work on campus somewhere. And so, I um I spoke to Nadia and she said she'll find out for me if she could if she could maybe help me figure out um uh, some student work uh, arrangement. And yeah, she got me connected to a professor called Professor Bartholdi. Um, he sadly passed away in the middle of my um, term that I was there. But um yeah, he 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 took me on as a student. Um which paid a stipend so they they paid me some uh some salary basically um but they also reduced my tuition costs so being being a um, being a student assistant um or research assistant they they actually reduced my my um my tuition by about 
fifty percent, um, and so then the loan covered the rest of that. Actually. Because in America, typically you pay in-state and out-of-state fees, and I guess they changed you from out-of-state fees to the uh, roughly about the amount that students that that are originally from that particular state what what they would actually pay for tuition. Am I right? Yes, that's essentially what happened. Yes. Yeah. All right. So so you still have a loan to work off. I still do have a loan to work off, and that's basically why I'm still working in the States. Okay, cool stuff. Right, but I want to get to the actual studying. Tell us about that experience in terms of, I mean, number one, how does it compare to, to let's say, the mannerism or the, or the style of teaching and, and learning here in South Africa, specifically University of Pretoria? Um, and how did you find the, the move into, into graduate studies, especially at Georgia Tech. And I mean, I mean it's, it's worth saying here that Georgia Tech is the number one uh, industrial engineering school probably in the world. Um, yeah. Definitely in the States. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely in the United States. And I think, I think they, they might be ranked number one. I haven't seen the latest rankings, but they might be rank, ranked number one in the world at the moment, um, especially in operations research. Uh, they have some incredible research being done here. Um, yeah, so just a little bit of background. So I, I got, I obviously did my um, bachelor's uh, in industrial engineering at the University of Pretoria. And then I came to the States to come and do uh, an engineering degree in what they call supply chain engineering. And essentially this this degree is a one-year program or a three, sem uh, three semester program. So summer, fall, and spring semester, as they call it in the States. Um, and essentially, this, this program is uh, an industrial engineering degree with a very strong focus uh, on supply chain problems. And so the, the degree really focused a lot on operations research in supply chains. So how do we set up, um, how do we model systems uh, how do we model supply chain systems using the operations research tools that we have? Um, so we did a lot of linear programming and a lot of mixed integer programming. Um, but we also did, we, we played around a little bit with simulation. Um, and we, but we, but the main thing that, that what sort of struck me uh, about this course was um, how practically involved it was. So we, we had a few industry sponsors that sponsored projects for us, uh, which we would work on throughout our, our studies. And so our course, yeah, that's just a bit of background on, on what the course looks like. Um, how did it compare to South Africa? It's difficult to compare a graduate degree to an undergraduate degree. Um, and so the two experiences were obviously very different. I think, first of all, my class was a lot smaller, so we had uh, a bit more of a personal relationship with each other in the class uh, and with the professors. And I think the other thing that was slightly different is uh, the fact that it was so hyper-focused. It was really focused on supply chain problems. Um, that, was, that was a little bit different than just doing a bit of a broader um, sort of more general course, um, which I enjoyed. I appreciated the fact that I could specialize in something and, and get really good at, at doing something very specific. Um, do I think, I, th I think that at the University of Pretoria, we got, we got a really good foundation. And I think this might go into some other questions as well, but we, we, we really did get prepared well for graduate studies, I think, at least. Um, once I got into the program, a lot of my, the, especially the operations research classes that we had at the uh, University of Pretoria really prepared me well. Um, and I think the mindset of always wanting to learn, I feel like that's the biggest thing that, that I learned from the University of Pretoria is always being curious, always wanting to learn more, always wanting to uh, dig a little deeper, work a little harder. Um, and I think sort of the key I've, I've always said this, but I think the key thing that we learn in the industrial engineering at the University of Pretoria is how to think like an industrial engineer. You can always learn how to use all these tools like operations research, simulation, um, what have you. But the, the way of thinking, the, the, the engineering process, the design thinking is really, is really what, what I could take from the University of Pretoria and apply it at, at Georgia Tech. Um, also, another uh, interesting thing that I just thought about at Georgia Tech, obviously, there's a lot of 
um, industry partners, so big industry partners, people like um, UPS, Amazon, um, Delta, a, a bunch of these big companies. So there's a lot of research going on. And the breadth of research is just incredible to me. That that sort of blew my mind a little bit. Um, I I was really, I think at, at the University of Pretoria, we you do some, you guys do some really good research there, but the scale of it on this side is is just on a different level. And it was just in, fascinating to me to see how many people they have doing research. Um, and then with the size of the companies that they're actually working with for, was was fascinating to see. Um, so maybe the difference was that it was just the scale is 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 a little bit different. Just I'm yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. Do you have off the top of your head an idea of how many full time staff members they have in the department? Oh, that's a good question. I am not a hundred percent sure. I think it's uh, they might have around a hundred and twenty people. Um, I think I'm not sure. I would have to actually do some research to see that. But yeah, it's around there. Yeah, so it, it, it really is a scale difference. I mean, we're we're, yeah. one, we're one tenth of that. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you mentioned that you're now working. How did that come about? So you finished your degree. Congratulations! Uh, I think it's really nice having Georgia Tech on your on your CV. Um, and and now you're working. So how did that change your situation in terms of your visa, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a couple of things. Georgia Tech does, so because they are such a highly ranked school, there is a lot of interest in the students from industry. So industry really wants to work with Georgia Tech industrial engineering students. So they have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have massive um, career fairs that are very formal. So we all like wear a suit and you go up to all these employers and you try to sell yourself to all of these companies. And it was kind of fascinating to me walking up to um, to these companies and they, like in my mind, I thought I would have to sell myself to them. But in their minds, they wanted to sell themselves to me. And I was like, this is, the tables have turned. This is very interesting. Um, so the university does a lot of work to try and connect you with companies. And so they have really good career services that you can that you can use, and I, I spoke to them quite a lot on like preparing my resume, uh, preparing for interviews, um, and they really walked me through that process. So the company that I'm working for is a company called OMP or um, OM Partners, um, and they essentially showed up at one of the career fairs, and I spoke to them, and um, then went through the application process online, and eventually got the job with them. How did this change my visa situation? Um, so in America, we have what is called the F1 student visa. So any any person who wants to come and study here in like a full-time degree and not just as an exchange student has to get an F1 degree uh, uh, visa, excuse me. And so the F1 visa has what they call an optional practical training uh, extension. And so what the American government has said is that a lot of people, you come and study here, but then you don't get practical experience. So you don't know really how to apply what you've just learned. So they allow students an additional year. So they give you an extension on your visa uh, as an, a, an additional year where you can actually work on your student visa. So you don't have to apply for a work permit or a green card or permanent residency on any of those things. Provided that you Absolutely. have completed your degree successfully. True. Yes. So I have to. You have to complete your degree, and then you can apply to get the OPT extension, is what they call it, optional practical training. Yes. Yeah. So we can expect you back. The, that is that is that question is still up for debate. I am I am very torn, very very torn. Yeah. All right. So what are your next steps? It's it's seeing this year through in terms of your extension. Yes. So yeah, my first year. My, my first plan is to sort of see this year through. Obviously, I still have a, a pretty hefty student loan that I need to pay back, and it's all in dollars. Um, so earning earning in dollars really does help to pay back this loan. Um, and so I'll I'll see this year through, and then my company will also decide if if they if they really want me to stay on past a year. They said that they will sponsor the work visa, um, and so. 
we'll see how how that relationship grows um and then i'll also see where my heart takes me i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty torn at the moment between going home and seeing family and living in my beautiful country uh, but also living in the states there there are some perks to to living here um so i'm i'm pretty torn at the moment advice that you would give prospective students who are interested uh, in studying abroad what would you do differently if you were to take this journey again yeah this is interesting i what i might do differently and i i don't want to this is not a slight at georgia tech but the only thing that i would want to do differently is to actually apply at a few different schools potentially um just to see uh if i could potentially get in and maybe maybe have some other options i um i only applied at the one school which is not a problem because i actually i got in but um it is something that i that i think about sometimes like I, I could have applied to some other schools and and maybe did did another degree or something but i i really enjoyed what i did um i think i should have just done a little bit more research into other areas as well um but my i think my main advice to people is and i think this was this was something that i ran into very early on is i immediately the first thing that i thought about when i started looking to study overseas is oh my goodness it's going to dollars a year just in tuition fees and that is a lot of money i i don't know how i can pay that back and we're earning a south african salary don't know if i can ever afford this i'm going to put myself in a world of debt for the rest of my life um and i would my main advice for people is to to not just look at that yes it's a lot of money but there are financial um services there are financial um engines i don't know how to call this but but essentially there are ways for you to to pay this money um so don't let that be a hurdle don't let that stand in your way of going to study abroad also you don't have to come and study in the united states you can go and study anywhere in the world and it's not as expensive across the world uh, it might be more expensive but um more expensive than South Africa, but but it might not just be as expensive as the states. So don't let that be a hurdle. That is my my main my main advice for everyone. And then also, I guess take it step by step. Just break it down into the things that you would need, um, and take it step by step. That's essentially what I did. Is I I said I need to. I I got all the requirements, and then I wrote all those requirements down from the university's website, and I made sure that I knew how to do each. And every one of those requirements, how to meet each and every one of those. Um, and when you do a little bit of research on each one of those requirements, it's it's not as hard as people think it is to come and study abroad. I mean, people from Asia do this all the time. My my classroom was basically seven, maybe we maybe had five Americans in my in my class of fifty people, um, and the rest were. Uh, people from india people from china and then one of one or two french people so people do this all the time you can you can definitely you can definitely do it <laughs> and in terms of kind of culture you now mentioned that you only had about five americans in the class but the general experience uh, in in terms of the let's call it if we can generalize as badly in terms of the american culture uh, i assume that speaking english is is the easy part of it um what was that an adjustment it was it was a bit of an adjustment i i sometimes do miss speaking afrikaans on a daily basis um i had to learn how to express myself properly in english especially um, frustration <laughs> <laughs> it really does it sometimes sometimes i'm just like i i feel like people are misunderstanding me and i don't understand why but i think it's like the small little language differences that sometimes get to me a little bit um so it was interesting i i would say i had two different two different experiences first of all i had my university experience which was very international uh, because georgia tech is really really a very very international school um uh so that was a very interesting experience because we did a lot of group projects so we had to work with uh, a lot of indians and a lot of chinese people um and so bridging that communication gap and their english is much worse than you would think <laughs> which is fascinating um so there there was a bit of a communication gap there and so we 
we struggled sometimes and we had to work through some communication um, difficulties. But then my other, my other experience was with um, this group of friends, this group of American friends that I made. Um, and so my situation is a bit different than I think most people's is. Um, I got connected to, through my church in South Africa, I got connected to a church group in, in Atlanta. And so I had this group of American friends um, that are very Southern. Um, and they enjoy going hunting um, on their farms and they enjoy eating red meat, like very much similar to the South African uh, Afrikaner, you know? Um, and so I had to sort of know how to navigate that, that environment a little bit. But fortunately, in that environment, being a foreigner makes you stand out a little bit. So naturally, people are a little bit more curious. Um, so I got included in a lot of things. And so it was it was an easier adjustment than I anticipated it to be. Cool stuff. It is really nice yeah. talking to you. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with the with your time that's remaining. When exactly did you did your extension year start? Um, it started at the beginning of August. OK, so, so you've got quite a while still yes. to go. Great. Quite a while to go. Yeah. Good luck with so, that, and I hope we see you back here. Otherwise, enjoy it. Take care. Thank you very Beatrice, much. Beatrice, Jan de Vreesberg, it was an honor speaking to you and seeing your face again. Thank you so much.